from LaGrange, Indiana, John Gilmore. Yay! Right, good evening, everyone. Is this on? This is now. Okay, good evening, everyone. Yes. Okay, tonight I have a tale to tell for you, one that will chill you right down to the soul. Okay? Although it starts out as a lover's tale, yeah. we're going to have to wait to see how this goes. Okay? Now, there's once two young lovers. Do we have two young lovers out there? Where are they? Right. Paul? Can you and your young, young lover come out here, please? Sign up for that, Sarah. We just have to have two chairs right over here for you. I didn't have time to change. There was two young lovers. They were living the dream. <laughs> Their life was perfect and they were happy. They spent each day holding each other's hands smiling so bright, and whispering sweet nothings in each other's ears. <laughs> there was a union made in heaven, and the stars were in the eyes. Now, this young couple went through life filled with love, hope, and joy. Picture-perfect union, which will soon be destroyed. For one day, they went traveling across the land, all of Judea. <laughs> they traveled here and there, seeing the sights and wonders, pyramids and... But fate would soon have other plans for them. It was a dark and stormy night, <laughs> as all tales such as this deserve. They had taken the road less traveled, which has made all the difference in their upcoming saga. For when their car broke down, they had nowhere to go. They waited for hours for another vehicle to pass. But they were in such a remote area, the roadway remained undisturbed. Cell phones were useless, mainly because they didn't have them 2,000 years ago, <laughs> but also because service was unavailable. So as the night approached its zenith, they decided to walk for help. Through the dark of night, they trudged, their clothes getting soaked, Mud coated their feet, I was going to say shoes. <laughs> Water dripped down their nose. They walked for miles, looking for a sign, some house or perhaps a gas station they hoped would appear before their eyes. But it wasn't to be. They had given up hope when out of desperation they explained they would give up their soul if they can but be saved. Flash of night, lightning lit up the sky, thunder rolled across the heavens, and there out of the darkness appeared a man with a glimmer in his eye. He said, you folks look like you can use some help, to which they quickly agreed and nodded. Ah, but first, what was that you said regarding trading your soul? Now the couple was taken aback. They didn't know what to say. I mean, they tried to protest, thinking that he was joking. But the stranger held his ground and firmly asked, so do you agree? Yes. Okay, with that, the stranger turned around and said, follow me, I'll lead you on the way. And there, out of the darkness, appeared a house before their eyes. <laughs> now, I am not an unreasonable man. I'll make a wager with you. You see this house up ahead, this will be our playing field. Inside this house, there are many rooms. <laughs> they also pulled out a bunch of cards, tarot cards, all different. Inside this house, we will place a card in each room. Now these cards will represent your fate, of which you alone will choose. For you see, there's one that I hold most dear. But it's not time to reveal that yet. 
because the choice you make must be made free and clear. Instead, I will place in front of you my very own wallet, which has a duplicate card. Now, if the card you end up choosing matches, well, then it was meant to be. Your soul will be mine, and I will claim my prize for all eternity. But should you choose a different card? No, then the stars are in your favor. For if that's the case, I will turn and walk around and walk away. Your soul will remain for later. But here are the rules, simple and fair. There are about four doors, A, B, C, D, of which to enter. Which one now would you choose? D. Gonna choose D. Now the next question, would you like odd or even? Think carefully before you answer. What will it be? Even. Even? Great. Now the third and final question before we begin. <laughs> I'm almost giddy with excitement. You have free choice of any number, any even number, any will do. Now remember, it's been a long night. You're tired, cold, and wet, so maybe keep the number within reason, because you will have a little bit of walking to do soon. So choose any number you like. Six. <laughs> okay, we're, we're going with six. Okay, now comes the fun part. You get to do a little bit of walking. You have free range of all this house. You can start walking, and as you enter each room, begin to count. You may walk in and out of any room you please, noticing the card in the center. Count as you go until you reach the number that you selected. One. Two, three, four, five, six. Five, six. Okay. And now, your part is done. Your, no, 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 don't sit yet, though. Your card is selected. Your fate is set. Please remove the card and see what you chose. And say it out loud so we can all come here. The devil. <laughs> the devil. <laughs> Now, the question is, is it a match for mine? For, I feel I've been most fair, don't you agree? You've had free choices all along. Now, the only way that I could win is if, yes, indeed, it was meant to be. The wallet I placed over here contain one, contains one card. <laughs> and which card would this be? The devil. The, the devil. devil. Now, now perhaps, perhaps you think this is a setup. Now, why if you had chosen just another, another number, say, maybe an odd number instead, five? Why, count again and see, there are many possibilities. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, or you can go one, two, three, four, five. I could, yes. There are lots of possibilities. This just goes to show that when it comes down to fate, it is best not to make a wager with a stranger. Thank you. John Gilmore.